90% of all websites are already responsive. If you want to make sure that your site is not part of the other 10%, then this video is exactly what you're looking for. Hello and welcome back to another video. I'm Lucas and today I will show you how to create responsive websites with Tailwind CSS. If you're new to Tailwind, I would recommend you to watch my new Tailwind CSS crash course first. I will link it for you in the top right corner of the video as well as in the description box down below. One last thing before we start. If you would have the opportunity to help somebody else without having to spend your time or money or without any disadvantages for yourself, would you do it? If the answer is yes, then please smash the like button for me and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on important videos just like this one. Thanks, and now let's get started. Basically responsive design means that your site looks good on any type of device, from mobile screen to ultra wide monitor. And today I'm going to show you how you can do this with the CSS framework Tailwind. So by default Tailwind uses a mobile first breakpoint system. This means you first create your mobile design and then adapt it to larger screen sizes by using breakpoints. In Tailwind there are 5 breakpoints by default. You have small, medium, large, x-large and double x-large. These breakpoints are min width breakpoints, which means they only take effect at a specific width and above. For example, if you use the breakpoint small, you target every device with a screen width of 640 pixels and up. So essentially this breakpoint is the same uh, as this media query here. With uh, media queries in pure CSS, the most commonly used query is with max width here. And it's the complete opposite with Tailwind. You can use those prefixes to target single, single breakpoints, multiple breakpoints or even a breakpoint range. And you can also customize these breakpoints as well as add new custom breakpoints to it. Let's take a closer look. If you want to use one of those breakpoint prefixes to target a single breakpoint, you just need to add the prefix followed by a colon and then add the class name you want to assign to this prefix. Let me show you with a simple example. And by the way, that's the exact same project environment like in my Tailwind crash course from last week. So Tailwind with React and I used Vite to create my React app. So let's say we want to create a responsive section that displays a picture and some text. For that, we use a section HTML element. Inside there, we first create a div element, uh, which in this case is kind of like an image wrapper. And inside this wrapper, we add an image. For this exercise, you can just go to Google Images, search for an image, open the image in a new tab and copy the URL and paste it in right here, like so. Now, below that div, we create another div which is kind of our text wrapper. And inside there, we first create a headline. And below the headline, we want to create a paragraph with some text in it. Perfect. And save. Next, we style the section element. Like I already mentioned in the last chapter, we first create our mobile design. So for this one, uh, we want uh, spacing between the image and the text wrapper. So we make the section element a grid container and use the gap property here, like so. Then we style the headline by adding text for XL and font medium to make it larger. And we also want to add a margin bottom by saying MB minus two, like so. Perfect. Save looks pretty good already. But if we increase the size of the window, as you can see, now the image does not take up uh, the whole space anymore. So we have to add a width of 100% to the image. So we see full like this. And while we're at it, let's also add a border radius here. Let's say rounded LG, like so. Save, perfect. That's all we want for our mobile design. 
And now we're going to adapt the design for larger screen sizes by using breakpoints. So let's take a look. So I would say starting at around 780 pixels, we should change the layout here and place the image and the text next to each other instead of below each other. For that, we only need to make a small change to the section element. We use the MD prefix here for medium. Uh, with this prefix, we can target a screen width of 768 pixels and higher. And then we add grid calls two, which just means starting from this breakpoint on, we want two columns. Let's take a look. Perfect. And with this layout change, we also want to make the text align left and we want uh, to center it vertically. So we also add MD item center and MD um, text left like this. Perfect. And no, you cannot add multiple utilities with only one prefix. So something like MD items center plus text left, this would not work. Every utility needs its own prefix. So let's delete this and take a look. Awesome. So once again, these are unprefixed utilities. And this, there is no prefix in front of them and they take effect on all screen sizes. And these are prefixed utilities. There is a prefix in front of them and with this prefixed utilities, you can overwrite unprefixed utilities starting at a specific point. Let me show you a simple example from the official docs. So this here is an unprefixed utility and this basically applies to all sizes, but this is a prefixed utility um, and it overrides it for all screens uh, with a width of 760 pixels and higher. And with this prefixed utility here, you override both of them starting from a width of 1024 pixels and so on. This approach is very simple and straightforward and it is the most common one. With this approach, you basically already get everything that you need to create responsive designs. For all of you who already knew or used it, don't worry, we're now moving on to some more interesting chapters. What many of you probably didn't know about creating responsive design with Tailwind is that besides targeting a single breakpoint, you can also target a breakpoint range. And I'm talking without adding any customizations. The crazy thing about this is that I couldn't even find one video on YouTube that at least mentions this approach. Let's take a closer look. By default, styles that are applied with prefixes will apply at a certain breakpoint and stay applied at larger breakpoints until they get overridden by bigger breakpoints, for example. But you can also apply a utility only when a specific breakpoint range is active. If you want to limit a style to a specific range, you just need to stack a responsive modifier like SM or MD with a max breakpoint modifier. For example, if you want to target all breakpoints from small to large, and I mean including large, you just need to say SM followed by a colon and then max XL followed by a colon again. And then we add the utility uh, we want to assign to this range. So let's say we want a background blue 50, like this. Let's save and take a look. So we start small and increase the size of the window. And uh, once we reach the width of 640 pixels, we get the blue background because at 640 pixels, uh, our SM breakpoint starts. And this background stays until we reach a width of 1280 pixels because 1280 pixels is the start of the XL breakpoint. After that, the range is not active anymore and the background is gone. So if you write a breakpoint range like that, then this does not mean including the XL breakpoint. No, it means till the beginning of this XL breakpoint. 
Let's also quickly add a padding for the same range. And take a look. That actually doesn't look too bad. But sometimes you need more than just breakpoints and breakpoint ranges. Sometimes you need customization. Although Tailwind already provides lots of stuff out of the box, you often need or want to use customization. And customization in Tailwind is super easy. Let's talk about customizing breakpoints. Like I already mentioned in the chapters before, there are 5 breakpoints by default. And inside the tailwind.config.js file, in the theme section here, you can change or completely override these default breakpoints as well as add new custom breakpoints to it. Let's take a closer look on some of those customization options. If you want to completely replace the default breakpoints, add your custom screens configuration directly under the theme key here. So right inside here before the extend section. For that you just need to add the screens key And then you can add your custom breakpoints in form of key value pairs. Let's say we want to have a breakpoint with a prefix of tablet and we want this breakpoint to only take effect at a width of 690 pixels and higher. For that we would say tablet followed by a colon and 690 pixels like this. So this is the min width value here. Let's save and head to the app.jsx file. And there we can now test our new breakpoint. Instead of using sm or md here, we now use our new prefix tablet. And now that is also the only breakpoint we can use because we have overridden all the others. So let's change them all to tablet now. Let's save and take a look. Perfect. Everything works fine. Let's move on. Now, if you just want to override a single screen size like SM or MD, then add your custom screens value inside the extent key. So inside here. But first, let's delete this over here. And then let's say we want to change the min width of the medium default breakpoint. The medium default breakpoint currently takes effect at a width of 768 pixels and higher. And we want to change that min width to 800 pixels. So we add the screen key in here. And then we add the following key value pair. We say MD, that's the prefix, followed by a colon. And then we add 800 pixels. As a value. Like so. Let's save and go back to the app.jsx file. And let's change this prefix here to md. And now if we hover over the prefix, as you can see our medium breakpoint now kicks in at 800 pixels. So it seems like our change is working. Let's move on to the last customization option that I will cover in this video. If you want to use the default breakpoints and just want to add new breakpoints to them, for example you want to add a 3xl breakpoint for ultrawide monitors. For that we need to stay inside the extend sections here uh, because we don't want to overwrite, no we want to add something. And in there we again need the screens key, like this. And inside there we want to add the prefix 3xl and the value of 1680 pixels, like so. And with that we added a 3xl breakpoint. Let's go back to the app.jsx file. And we can now add the 3xl breakpoint just like all other breakpoint prefixes by just typing 3xl followed by a colon and then you can uh, assign the utility you want to this breakpoint. Let me repeat that one more time. If you want to override the default breakpoints with a complete new set of custom breakpoints, you add it right in the theme section here, but before the extend section. 
And if you want to add custom breakpoints or only adapt a single default breakpoint, you add it inside the extend section here, just, just like this one here. And also don't forget to add the screens key, otherwise it won't work. So these are the most common and popular options and that's probably all you need to know about customizing breakpoints. There are still some customization options that I didn't cover in this chapter, like using the default breakpoints but with custom screen names, or change from min width breakpoints to max width breakpoints, or create completely custom media queries from scratch. But you probably don't need them. But if you really want or need to learn all about uh, these options as well, just head over to tailwindcss.com slash docs slash screens for more infos about it. Or comment down below, maybe I'll do a part two where I'll explain even more customization options. One short bonus chapter before I wrap up this video. You have to know that there is more to responsive design than just the media queries and breakpoints. If you want to create truly responsive websites, you also need to understand and use relative units like percentage or viewport units and CSS math functions like min, max and clamp as well as fluid layout models like Flexbox or Grid Container, and so on. So make sure to also use or learn this kind of stuff as well, because responsive design isn't going anywhere, and it's probably not a bad idea to learn more about it than just the basics. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, I'm sure you enjoyed it, so make sure to destroy the like button and subscribe for more videos like that, and I will see you in the next one. Ciao!